Welcome to The Idea Space, a podcast devoted to sharing strategies and tools to help you make your dream life possible. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women grow their businesses and get what they want without feeling guilty, overwhelmed, or confused. If you're tired of your ideas spinning around your mind and you really want something more for yourself, you're in the right place. Learn how to create the space to make your ideas a reality. I promise if I can do this, anyone can. Let's go. Hi, thanks for joining me this week. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and today I'm talking about how to make our houses more functional for us right now in this particular time when we're quarantined and suddenly our homes have to do a real heavy lift for us. Our homes are now classrooms and restaurants as we make all the meals, right? Or maybe we're home working and we don't usually do that or we're home working and we have partners who are also home working and we have children who need to be taught or who need to be creative and need to play. And so right now our homes are a very important part of our lives. And I have been learning how to be in my own home with my husband and my son during this time. And I thought, Maybe other people are struggling with this too. Maybe people who have, um, you know, even more dire situations than me. Maybe they have even less space and even more people. And so today I'm sharing with you Carrie Luteran, who is a professional organizer and interior designer. And she specializes in helping people understand how to use their space in a more functional way. I interviewed Carrie on the web series I'm doing on my Facebook page, and every single day I'm interviewing different brilliant women and men about tools that can help keep us calm, centered, and grounded so that we can keep moving forward even though our emotions are high and we feel you know, confused and scared and anxious. And every day I'm sharing a new tool. Well, today's tool was Carrie, and the stuff that she shared was so brilliant that I wanted to share it with you on my podcast. So what you're going to hear in the podcast today is from my interview with her, which was on Facebook Live. Now, if you want to find more of these interviews, and fo- like, there's basically a different training every day of realistic stuff that you can use. I'm actually calling it Miraculously Realistic Tools, because I realized like, I have so many tools in my toolbox that keep me sane and centered, and I wanted to share them with you. Today's podcast is one of those tools, but if you want to go find more of them, you can find me at facebook.com forward slash Jen Liddy coach. And all of the videos are there. If you just click on the videos, you'll find them all there. But I hope that you enjoy today's conversation with Carrie, because you're going to take away some really actionable, doable things that are like super reasonable, so that you can start to make your house more functional for you during this time. Thanks for stopping by and I will talk to you next week. Bye. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching today. Uh, You know, if you've been following along that every day during this quarantine COVID-19 virus nonsense, uh, we are, I'm going live with a different expert to help you find tools to help you stay calm, centered and grounded so that you can keep going and you can manage your mind and you can stay motivated and get through your days. I've invited my friend, colleague, and, um, I like to say Carrie was born for social distancing. (laughs) Um, it's very we true. In, we are in a couple of groups today. We know each other socially and pro- professionally. And um, I'm a high extrovert and Carrie's a high introvert. And so she... Right. We're the opposite ends <laughs> of the spectrum. We are. And so we, we laugh a lot at each right. other and about each other. Um, but I'm glad that you're here today because Carrie Luteran is the owner of Pretty Neat. And she mm-hmm. is a professional organizer and an interior designer. And she's mm-hmm. basically taken two things and mash them together to become an expert in how to help you have a more functional home. And so I invited her on today to teach us how to create a more functional home during this time of social distancing, quarantining, isolation. And um, I want you to know that like we get that your home is now a classroom and a mm. restaurant and, you know, the laundry, you're probably doing more laundry than before. And oh God, yeah. you're supposed to be playing, right? Like it's a place, like your home is now the hub for everything. So I've invited Carrie on to teach you how to create a more functional home. At any point today, if you have questions, please drop them in the comments. Carrie can answer them as we go, but I'm going to shut up and turn it over to Carrie. Thank you so okay. much, Carrie. Thanks, Jen. I'm so excited to be here. And yeah, 
we're just in such a weird time right now. I mean, we are staying home. We need to be home. But so, um, yeah, we're staying home. It's the most important thing we can do right now to keep our healthcare system from getting overwhelmed. But what that means is for most of us, if we're not essential services, we are spending 24 hours, seven days a week in our houses. And um, most likely our entire family is too. So we are all there and we're doing everything. We're working from home. We might be teaching kids at home now or trying to. We're exercising at home. And um, another thing is we're eating all of our meals every day at home, which might be a big adjustment for a lot of people. So um, it occurred to me that during this weird time, we really need to adjust our homes so that they function um, for this kind of new lifestyle that we're all living. And in the work that I do as a professional organizer and interior designer, um, whenever I meet new clients and start a new project, I always ask them about function first, because, you know, if your place looks good, but it doesn't work well, it's really, you know, that's no good. So um, I always ask people, you know, what are you doing in your home? What activities does your house need to support? And um, what's working well for you right now? What's maybe not working? And are there things that you want to have time for or you don't have a space for? And then we try to work from there. So I think these are the same questions you can ask yourself now about this kind of change in lifestyle. And what adjustments can you make to your home to um, you know, make it work better for you? So a big thing I think is a workspace. You might be working from home. You might have a partner who's there working from home. And also your kids are probably doing school from home now. So everybody needs a workspace. And I work from home normally. And I know how important it is to have kind of a dedicated place for this. Um, when I go sit down at my desk, it really puts me in the mindset for work. And it helps me be more productive and stay focused. I really think our environment can be a cue for certain behaviors. And so if you have a dedicated place you can go to, this doesn't need to be an entire home office, but even just a folding table in some space in your house right now, you know, it's a place you can go, you can sit down and get in that mindset for work. Same with your kids, you know, they might be doing school from home now and, you know, However, it's working for you. I say, you know, hats off to all parents for making things work right now. But, um, you know, rather than them kind of sitting on the couch where you normally are watching shows and hanging out and trying to get schoolwork done there, they might be more productive if they have a specific place they can go and work. You know, if, if they're going to actually use that space, you know, that's another question. But, um, you know, you can maybe set this up with the intention of giving them a place where they can be more focused. I love that you said it doesn't have to be a whole room because not mm -hmm. all of us have giant, giant, gigantic houses with lots of right. extra rooms. Some of us are in a, in a tight space. And, mm -hmm. But even like this is your seat. Like we are using the kitchen table right now for my husband's mm -hmm. workspace and my son's workspace. And so like my husband sits in this one place and all of his stuff is around him and my son right. sits at another spot. And we don't have a whole room, but we do have spaces. Absolutely. I think that's great. And again, thinking about what you need to have on hand, like what supplies or reference materials and keeping them close by just to, again, make it easy for yourself. <clears throat> Another thing to keep in mind right now, one thing we're not doing is entertaining, right? No one's coming over. So we don't have to be so concerned about how it looks and maybe having a folding table set up in your family room is not what you would normally functional. And then, um, you know, once, once we're on the other side of this, we can get back to kind yeah. of making it look pretty. I can't believe you. <clears throat> now it's definitely not getting used unless your family uses that normally to eat at. So for folks, just as an example, if you have small kids and you really could use a space for them to be creative and to, maybe do some arts and crafts and things like that. Um, you know, maybe the dining room table is a good spot for that. But your dining room might be a place where, you know, you want to keep it nice. You don't want them getting it messy. So are there some easy things you can do to adjust that space so that it can accommodate that? So you might move your nice dining room chairs that have the upholstered seats out, maybe stick them in the basement for now or in the garage. 
bring in some kid friendly chairs, get something to cover the table, even put something down on the floor. You know, you can get a really inexpensive rug online. Um, again, it doesn't need to look great, but that might be, um, a really useful place to, you know, have a, another activity spot for kids because, you know, keeping them occupied right now is going to be a major undertaking. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of my clients who are like, I have no idea how to grow my business because my kids are underfoot and they expect me to play with them all the time. And that's actually a different conversation that I'd really like to have with somebody, how to mm -hmm. kind of shift the expectations of our kids. But you're talking about shifting our own expectations from my house is all set. It looks pristine. I'm really happy with it too. Hey, we're mm. kind of in a triage situation here. Right, and right. It's far more important that we go for function rather than pretty. Definitely. definitely. Yeah, I love this mindset shift. It's huge. What yeah. else you got for us? I'm sure you got some more. Well, um, yeah, I think oh, a workout space is another thing that a lot of us might need. So um, again, is there a spot in your house? I, I know personally, I again, do most of my workouts at home. It's really helpful to have a place where I don't have to move a lot of furniture around. Like that's just one more barrier to doing the workout, even if it's just the coffee table or something. So if you can have a little space set aside, maybe, you know, repurposing a guest room or something, you're probably not having any guests over. Um, and, you know, making, I, I think doing activities is physical activity is going to be really important during this time. And weather's been pretty good, but you know, this is a still uncertain season here where we live. So maybe thinking about that too. Those yeah. Are good ideas. I just wanted to talk about repurposing a space because, mm -hmm. you know, like what our brains will do is drop in all sorts of barriers. Like, well, I can't really work out because I have to move the furniture. And you're saying, okay, we'll find a place yeah. where you don't have furniture. And then we'll, you know, well, I don't even have a laptop. Do you have a phone? Because mm -hmm everybody has a phone. Right. And if you can find a space in that old bedroom and move aside some of the boxes that are maybe in there, some mm -hmm. of the things you've been meaning to get to, um, and do the workout from your phone, like we've just got to really change our mindset, like that it has to be perfect. Right. Right. Absolutely. I, lo I love this. Let yeah. This we're just trying to get through the day now. So oh. whatever, <laughs> whatever we can do to make that a little bit easier. So in terms of making things a little easier, I think a big challenge now is cooking three meals a day for every person in your household, right? I've seen so many people posting. I, I'm lucky in that way that I live alone. And I, don't, I only have to take care of myself, but um, it's a big challenge. And I think this is a great time to really look at your kitchen and maybe think about how functional it is and are there adjustments that you can make. So Think about the, the process of cooking and the steps that go into that and where you do those different things. So where do you prepare food? Where are you chopping veggies and peeling stuff and doing that? Where are you actually doing the cooking? That's obviously going to be around the stove. And then where's the cleanup space? Where are you washing dishes and loading the dishwasher and all of that? The things that you need for each of those steps, are they being stored right now within arm's reach of that space? So, you know, this is kind of a, an obvious thing, but I think that a lot of our storage decisions in our houses, especially in the kitchen, are based on where we put things when we moved in. So we just needed to put everything away and we put it in a certain place and that became its place. And we're just used to it being there, but maybe it doesn't make the most sense. You know, are your pot holders like in a drawer that's four steps away from the stove and could they be maybe, you know, relocated? So again, just thinking through the process of using your kitchen and are there adjustments you can make? Depending on the size and layout of your kitchen, you might not be able to, you know, make these, this work perfectly. But again, can you unload the dishwasher without taking any steps? Can you store everything, you know, nearby enough that it's really efficient? Because you're probably going to be running that dishwasher like crazy. <laughs> right, Jen? <laughs> like how many times a day? There's only three of us here. I why? I know, but if you we, use a dish every meal and that's, you know, that's a lot that's going on a lot throughout the day. So, um, so yeah, there might not be a perfect solution, but, um, but just doing a little thinking about that. 
Also, um, you know, you might have some extra time on your hands. This is a great time to declutter your home in general, but declutter your kitchen. Like it's, it will make it so much more functional if you can just move some of the stuff out that you're not using. So, um, I recommend, you know, dig into those cabinets, take everything out. You don't have to take it all out simultaneously, but maybe go cabinet by cabinet, remove everything and really look at it and ask yourself, like, how often are we using this? When's the last time we used this? Again, is this an item that I use when I'm entertaining and it doesn't need to be in the main cabinet where I'm storing all my everyday dishes? Can I relocate that? Um, you know, when's the last time you looked in that cabinet that's over the fridge or that's over the, the range hood? You know, we usually tuck things away in there and they never see the light of day. So, um, you know, why not pull everything out now and, well, you've got a little extra time. And you don't have all of that stuff, but even just boxing it up, maybe putting today's date on it or writing like, you know, coronavirus declutter <laughs> on it, put it in the garage. And in a couple months, you know, if you need anything out of that box, you'll go get it. But in a couple months, whatever's still in there has not been, you know, find some stuff in there that can be donated. So I am really interested to see what's going to happen um, after this or during this time with like with Goodwill or, mm. or Salvation Army. Like how how much decluttering are people doing? Do you think right now? Do you think that the numbers are going up? That's a good question. I mean, I've seen a lot of people just making posts like, "Oh, what have you been doing? I've been organizing my house," and you know that can mean different things. But um, yeah, I would imagine that that. You know, I, I think that it can be a therapeutic thing yeah. to get your house organized and to get rid of some clutter. So I think that might be an activity that people are doing just, you know, it to gives us themselves busy. Yeah. And gives us kind of a sense of control. I know I always feel a little more like clear headed when yeah. I, when I've gone through that process. My so husband just, um, decluttered hundreds of books that have been up on our third mm -hmm. floor since, since we got married and bought this house 15 years ago. And so, there's a lot, there's like accounting books from when he was an undergrad. I mean, oh, course, yeah. right. So anyway, he brought them all down and he has plans to donate them and they're all in boxes. And mm -hmm. the day that he was planning to donate them, the donation places all closed. <laughs> so now I was terrified, of course, that we're just going to have these boxes in our living room for the duration, mm -hmm. but he moved everything out to the, to the garage. Nice. And I thought that was a good way station before we put it in the car to take it someplace. So yeah. that's something I wanted to encourage people like don't declutter and then just have this shit sitting around in right. your house. Like get it, get it someplace where you can like remember to take it then the next time it's like these things are open. Right. Right. And you might even do a little thinking about, you know, where, where is the way station for that stuff in my house that I can set it aside for now? Because I think it will help you feel a little more under control if you if you do this and it might be a project that you know will be satisfying to do during this time where things are so weird but um yeah it's uncertain at this point you know if you can actually bring stuff like make that final step but um definitely move it so that it's not just sitting around the other concern with that is you'll be start rethinking your decisions right <laughs> So if you can get it out of sight, I find once it's once I've set it out of sight, I really don't think about those decluttered things. I've never regretted a decluttering decision. I can say that. <laughs> I can't guarantee that will never happen, but chances are once it's out, you, you'll just, you know, you, you weren't using it anyway, so you're not going to miss it. This is the story of me and my juicer, which I bought probably mm -hmm. eight years ago and stopped using seven and a half years ago. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's, I still have it for some reason. And I'm a big declutterer. Uh, but it's, this is a really good time for even me who is very decluttered to like, like, go through again. Sure. Yeah. And it's something that we really should be doing regularly, because most of us, I mean, we're always accumulating stuff. Mm -hmm. And if we're not at the same time getting some things out, that's how things just pile up at home. And so, um, yeah, I think it's a good time to think through those things. And you brought up the juicer. I mean, again, thinking about your kitchen, I try to not have anything on the counter that I don't use every day or almost every day. So if you have a lot of appliances out, again, think about, you know, how often is that getting used? And if it's not really frequently, 
maybe there's another spot it can be stored. Or if you're really not using it hardly ever, Get maybe it. maybe it's a good candidate because those things just take up a lot of space. And yeah. and yeah, I know that these things take up like our energy, right? Like we we pass them all the time or every time we open up that closet, we're like, oh, oh, yeah. And so Lisa says that she deep cleaned her stove yesterday since she's she and her stove are spending a lot more quality time together. It's great, it might as well look beautiful, right? Like right. make it look nice. Make yourself want to spend time with that stove. Absolutely. And I think those little things like cleaning, you know, it really it does feel satisfying and it does put us in a better mindset, I think. So Kara, you've given us so many good actionable gems today. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you wanted to leave us with before you get back to your Sunday? I don't know. I mean, I think just, I feel in some ways there's a lot of pressure on everyone right now to like yes. be productive, oh, I love that. make the most of this time. I'm certainly feeling that way as a business owner, like this is the time you can do all the projects. And I do appreciate that. And if that, if productivity or having projects makes you feel good, um, definitely do that. But at the same time, you know, especially if you're raising kids and stuff like just be kind to yourself and, you know, just, I think we all, just, you know, there's enough stress happening just in the world that, um, we don't need to then stress ourselves out with trying to get everything, trying to be more productive than we normally would be during this time. So right. for some people I've been hearing, like some people, it's really hard to get out of bed in the morning. It's like mm -hmm. you know, some people are struggling with anxiety and depression right now. And yeah. Some people are mental so health overwhelmed. Is Absolutely. Yes. So you all, the, the action items that you offer today are good for our mental health and they're good for our mm -hmm. physical space and our energy. And so that's why I wanted you to share them. Uh, but if you have, if you are struggling with like the anxiety and the depression and you're swinging back and forth emotionally, go back to this video feed because you'll find so many tools that I'm offering talking to brilliant people like Carrie, like these geniuses are really good at helping you with your mental health, your physical health, your, you know, your space, uh, how to move forward. And so there's lots of, um, resources, like basically these are trainings. So just mm -hmm. go back and find something that, that you need right now. And I just want to say thank you to Carrie for coming on and taking your Sunday morning, getting dressed, first sure. of all, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I normally would be in my robe right now. So I, I have really my pajama you. pants on. Oh, so. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, how can people follow you? Because I do want to encourage you to get on, get on um, Carrie's email because she mm. doesn't send a newsletter. She sends you absolute gold every week like stuff oh, I'm that you so can, happy to hear that oh my god it's so worth opening like her emails are absolutely really helpful hi megan thank you for joining us <laughs> um and so if carrie how can people follow you on facebook and instagram and oh. then uh, get on your email list so uh, my facebook page is pretty neat uh pretty neat cny um oh. on instagram i'm uh pretty neat solutions and then my website is uh pretty neat solutions dot com. So okay. pretty straightforward. And maybe you can, you know, have a link or, you know, to my website or to Facebook on yes, here. That's and what I'm doing um, right now. yeah, and there's info on all those places about how to get on my email list. And um, I'm also going to be re releasing a course of mine, it's called too much stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're looking for a little additional help with decluttering your home, and there's a lot of mindset stuff in there too. Um, yeah. I'll be sharing information about that too. Well, you know, taking a course on this is having you come into our home and do this is so valuable because it, obviously sometimes we need our hands held, but mm -hmm. sometimes like during social isolation, we can't have you come in. Right. So this is a great solution for you to get started. And the mindset stuff is so important. It's not like we just have stuff because we have stuff like we're attached to our stuff. Right. We have stories about our stuff. And then what do we do with our stuff? And so Carrie's uh, Carrie's always so helpful with like talking about the practical and then the mindset stuff too. Thanks. Yeah. It's so important. There's, it is just stuff, but there's so much emotion tied up with our stuff that I think it's, we have to, we have to deal with that part of it too. So I do try to help with that. Well, I hope you're seeing the love that's coming through on the comments. About oh, <laughs> Lisa loved your recent email that spelled out. The oh, numbers. yeah, that was very helpful for people. Yeah. Yes, you, Carrie yeah. is very, very pragmatic, man. She's going <laughs> to tell you the truth. And then Alice says Carrie's email is full of useful information oh, every single week. Thank you. So, yeah, people so. are sending you love. Well, thank you, Carrie. I really appreciate your time and expertise. Awesome. Thank you for having so me. I will, yeah. I will see you online soon, but I won't probably see you until May in person. 
Okay, well, we'll stay in touch this way. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, Carrie. Appreciate you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app. And tell that friend of yours who needs some help getting where she wants to go. I'd be so appreciative if you left a review because then we can help more women create the space for their ideas too. Go to jenliddy.com forward slash free to grab the many free resources there to help you move forward. And I will see you next time. Bye.